Hi everyone and welcome to Spot On. My name is Rebecca Neal and with me today I have Brian Kern of Acadia Professional. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for joining me. Brian, I'd love to give you the opportunity to tell everyone a little bit about your background and about Acadia Professional. Thank you very much, Rebecca. I am a partner with Acadia Professional and my background is actually as a healthcare attorney and Acadia, which is an agency that specializes in medical malpractice insurance historically and more recently has re really created a national niche for itself in the value-based care space and helping physicians cover their downside risk associated with value-based care programs. So our corporate headquarters are in Morristown, New Jersey. We have an office in Manhattan, New York, and we also have an office in Jupiter, Florida. But we're a national agency. We work with a lot of the largest, most respected medical practices all throughout the United States. So I'd love to hear a little bit about the way that you and Acadia help your clients navigate the MedMal space and the difficulties that they face there? Yeah, it's a great question, especially now because there are so many participants, there's so many insurance companies in the marketplace. So it's almost giving physicians a false sense of security mm -hmm. that the market is going to stay competitive forever and all this is is just an area to continue to price shop. It's very dangerous because companies for a while probably overcharged and had a lot of money so they were in a position where they could get into a lot of price wars. So as a physician or a physician group how do I know that I'm being overcharged? Well that's why you need someone who really understands the marketplace and can navigate it for you. It's one thing to be with a great company and maybe not pay the absolute lowest price but it's another thing to be with that same company and pay more than you really need to just because you don't understand the market forces and that you can actually reduce your price by better negotiation, by implementing some risk management within your practice and by making a case as to why you're not priced appropriately and you should actually qualify for better pricing. So when you're engaging with your clients, how do you help them navigate reimbursements and are there any trends in uh, reimbursement issues that you're seeing? So we've realized one of the biggest barriers for physicians to get into these new value-based care programs mm -hmm. is understanding the downside risk associated with them. Often that leads to physicians joining with maybe hospitals, private equity partners, because it's so difficult for physicians to navigate that, this world on their own. Even the more sophisticated, whether it's private equity-backed groups or hospitals, are struggling in the same area because there's just not a marketplace for what, what is generally known as stop-loss insurance as it applies to value-based care programs. Stop-loss has been around for forever, covering large institutional-type risks, cap capitation programs. But as these new programs come about, bundled payments, there's a government program called BPCIA, there's a government program called OCM for oncologists, ACOs, accountable care organizations. As these programs not only mature, but require downside risk to be taken, it's becoming more challenging for physicians to understand how to stay in these programs and how to thrive in these programs. We recognized there wasn't a market. We recognized that physicians really needed this coverage in order to excel in value-based care and, and understand how to navigate it. We felt as leaders in the risk space, it was incumbent upon us to create this market. So we've been working with national, international markets, trying to teach them how to offer this coverage and also how to align it with medical malpractice insurance. We see tremendous efficiencies. It's complication risk, however you look at it. If a patient sues you for medical malpractice, it's most likely because there was a complication. If a patient has hundreds of thousands of dollars of additional medical bills that is going to hurt you under a value-based care type program, it's a complication. It's a complication either way. If you prevent that complication, you do better under value-based care programs and you avoid a medical malpractice lawsuit. Brian, can you break down some of the benefits of value-based care for physicians and physician groups? Sure. So the problem with fee-for-service is that when you do perform some kind of service or, pr or procedure for a patient, that's what you get reimbursed for. And yes, maybe you can make uh, a little bit more money if it's complicated, maybe a little bit less depending on your contract with the payers, but you're still left with reimbursement only for that one procedure. 
Under a value-based care program, the reimbursement is based on how you care for a patient if it's in a case of a bundle payment from the beginning of the procedure to the end. If it's a more broad term like population health where you're treating a whole population of patients, maybe managing chronic illnesses like COPD or diabetes, you are reimbursed based on outcomes and how you're able to treat these patients over a long period of time. Now, much of it is based on the cost of care for these patients, which is important because patients have to pay a lot out of pocket, whether it's coinsurance or deductibles. So it's important to keep those cost downs down in and of itself. The other piece is if you are keep keeping the cost down, you're probably delivering better care in the sense that there's less utilization. Of course, if the patient has to go to the hospital because they're not receiving great care, that's different. That's actually going to increase the total spend and it's not going to be beneficial to the, the practice that is um, running the value-based care program. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a great job with patient care, coordinating patients, making sure they're not spending more time than they need to in any institutions, not taking too many prescriptions, not doing things that they shouldn't be doing that's in the best interest of their own health care, that's how you keep costs down. And that's the premise behind value-based care. It's far from perfect. We have a long way to go with the system, but it gets better as time goes on. And the sooner physicians learn how to go outside of their traditional fee-for-service reimbursement and be able to manage a procedure or a condition over a long period of time, the more successful they're going to be.